Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is Rakesh Sudevanshi. Today in this session, we are continuing our discussion on securing application in Azure. Today in this session, we are going to look at how do you secure the platform as a service in Azure. So there are various ways to secure your applications in Azure with the platform as a services. So the application which you are deployed on the platform as services, such as an application deployed onto the app services, Azure Functions, or SQL Server database, or any other app platform as services. How do you secure those apps which has been deployed on these services? And what are the different types of security risk or issues you will have when you deploy the application onto these services? We'll look at that in detail. Before that, we'll go and look at the problem statement. How do we, what kind of problem we used to have while deploying the application or after the deployment of the application onto these past services. Today, we are going to look at storing the secrets in Key Vault. So, as you are aware, that the Azure offers the secret management services, which is called Key Vault. So, in there, you manage all your secrets, certificate, and keys so that anytime when you require application to retrieve the secret, your application logic access the key vault and grab the secret which can be utilized in your application logic. We will also look at the next level of managing the secret using the help of manage identity. So manage identity is the services which has been introduced to keep in focus that you are writing a code which is kind of a secretless code, right? In that case, the goal is to not store any kind of secret on your application code. So how do you do that using the manage identity? We'll look at that as well. Securing platform as a service with the managed identity. And again, it's the step ahead to make sure that your application is secretless code. Next is the demonstration wherein it's more specific to the application developers, how the application developer's responsibility is to manage the application code secure and protect their application for all kind of vulnerabilities. Let's look at the common scenario of a platform as an application service. So in the platform and as an application service, we typically used to have a platform as a service, which has been deployed on, let's say, this is a web app or app service. For example, and let's say this is the Azure function, which is hosting the application logic. Now, my Azure function or web app wants to have a connection to the SQL Server database, which is hosted in Azure. To do that, what typically used to happen, when we use the key vault, we store the client ID and the secret in our web config. And we use the .NET library .NET Key Vault library to be specific to grab the Key Vault secret with the help of Active Directory authentication. So I'll show you what exactly the flow looks like. First of all, as I mentioned, you store the client ID and secret in your web config or the application config or the JSON if you are using the .NET Core. And then use of the client ID and secret, you generate a bear token from the Active Directory. This client ID and secret is the client ID and secret of your service principal, right? So whenever you use the .NET library, basically .NET library invokes a call to the Active Directory and it makes a call and generate ask for basically to get in better token. Once the better token is there, it asks the key wall to get the secret with the help of the bearer token by meaning that the client ID and the secret or the service principle or a client ID 
must have access to the key vault to grab the secret value. Once you have the secret, basically you connect to the database. This is how the typical flow works. But still, here in this case also, you have the client ID and secret stored in your application config. So what if any hacker is hacker got in access to your client ID and secret by storing or by stealing the web config of your application code because it might possible that as a developer I might have checked in the client ID and secret in my source control repository and getting this client ID and secret from the source code repository is not a big deal. So in that case, the client ID and the secret can be misutilized to grab any sensitive information from the key vault. So the, your key vault might have some sensitive information such as a password to your servers, different servers, databases and so and so on, right? So keeping the client ID and secret on your application config code is not a good idea. Let's look at the demonstration now how do you retrieve the secret from the key vault. For this demonstration, I have a key vault created in my subscription and in that key vault, I have added a secret called my secret and the secret has got value dummy. To create the secret, I have used the Azure CLI command. This is the CLI command which I have used and I have assigned the secret value as a dummy. Now, once the key vault is there, I have also created a service principle in Azure Active Directory and assigned that service principle access to the key vault. So if I go back to the key vault and go back to the access policy, this is my service principle and which has got the access to the key vault. Yeah, as you can see, it has got two permissions to read the secret. Now, if I go back to the ASP.NET code, which I have it, this is my ASP.NET application. In this application, what I'm doing is I'm using the service principle client ID and service principle password, which is service principle secret. So using the client ID and secret, I'm calling the key vault method get secret asynchronous to get the value. Before I call this method, what exactly I'm doing, I'm using the client ID and secret to generate the bearer token, which is this method. Basically, this is the method which generates the bearer token from the active directory using the client ID and secret. And this method uses the bearer token. This method client ID uses the bearer token to get the value or to create the key vault uh, connection, key vault object basically. Now let's look at the application. I'll run the application and see if I'm able to get the well, read the value of the key vault. I'm reading the value in a view back and I'm displaying it here on my web application page. I'm trying to run the application locally. And as you can see, the secret is displayed here with the value dummy. This works fine, but the problem we got here is what if I check in the client ID and the secret value, which is being stored here into my source code? Because as a developer, I may mistakenly, I may check in the source code under the repository and doing that, the source code will have the client ID and secret value and anyone can use this client ID and secret value to read the secret from the key vault. Or not even, even though, let's say if I use the tokenization and the value goes only at the deployment time, but even somebody, let's say, hack your app service and grab the value of the client ID and secret from there, then you you will be in a big trouble because your key vault is basically hacked. So that's not a good approach. Microsoft has proposed another service to use to interact with one service and other service. The service name is Managed Service Identity. 
With the help of managed service identity, you get an option to create the identity within the services. And the identity is fully managed by the Microsoft. So any communication between one service to other service, for example, your application code, which is deployed in app service. So if your application app service wants to connect to the key vault, or if your application wants to connect to the storage account or the database, so you can use the managed service identity to connect from one resource to the other resource. The only constraint or the condition, I should not say constraint, but a condition here is a managed service can be used only within the service who are eligible to use the Active Directory authentication. Yeah, because managed service behind the scene uses the service principle and Active Directory authentication to communicate between one service and other service. Now let's look at how do you configure the managed services. So if I go to the services in Azure, let's say in the web application on my app service, under the configuration section in the settings, I also have one more setting called the identity. Here, if you click on the identity, you have two different tabs. One is the system identity, another is the user identity. A system assigned identity enables you enables Azure resource to authenticate to the cloud services such as in key vault without storing the credential in the code. So that's where we want to go. We want to achieve the secretless code for your application wherein we don't need to require any secret to be stored in the application code. And once the managed service identity is enabled, all the necessary permission can be granted to grant via the role-based access control. That's another good thing. Life cycle of the managed service identity is the life cycle of the, is associated with the life cycle of the resources. For example, if I'm going to assign a managed service identity to the app service, and that will be a service principle or the identity will be created in Active Directory. Once I'm going to delete this particular app services, app service, then the managed services identity will be deleted automatically and I don't need to delete explicitly for that. This is about the system generated identity. We also have the user generated identity. User assigned identity is the service, dedicated service available in Azure, which enable use to authenticate to the cloud services, again, such as a key vault without storing the code in this type of identity, you create a stoned alone resource to have their own life cycle. So basically, when I'm going to provision the user generated identity, user generated identity is a separate service available in Microsoft Azure. And you have to assign, create an identity, user generated identity, and then assign this identity to the different different services. And once you delete these specific services, the user assigned services will not delete because this two of them, both your, your service, Azure service and the user generated identity holds the different different life cycle. So it is not tightly coupled like it is in the case of system generated identity. So as you can see, you can go ahead and change the status on and off. Once you click on on, and save it, there will be identity object created. So I've already created an object for this demonstration and I have used my Azure CLI command to give the set the access policy to this particular object ID. And as you can see, I have the key vault now. If I go back to the key vault, now the key vault has the access permission for my app service. So the managed identity is created with the name of the same service. Yeah. And now if I look at the permission, it has got the same permission. Now, if I go back to the previous code and now what I'm doing here is I'm going to go ahead to the application code. So earlier our code was something like this, right? It was using the client ID and secret and it was reading the key vault secret from this, right? So instead of that, what I'm going to do now, I just need to use this code, providing the name of the secret, which is available in the key vault. For example, 
this is my key vault secret name name of the key right and the value will be displayed here now how do i register this so that it uses the key vault if i go to the program files when you create a .NET library or .NET class this is what the default configuration you get i've just commented out the the default configuration and here i'm using the key vault configuration so what i'm saying here is use this particular key vault name and using this particular key vault name use the client id and seek use the client id and the default lifecycle manager basically to get the authentication to access token using the managed service identity so now if i run this particular code locally this will not run because the machine from where i am running this code do not have access to the key vault and this code is going to use the managed service identity to access the key vault and yes you see i got the error that this machine is not authorized to connect to the key vault so using the managed identity it will use the identity which is assigned within the service and in this case my machine from where i am running this code my machine as a service do not have access to the key vault and you can see in the web.config i don't have any client id and the secret available in the code right so now if i go back and deploy the code here i am using the publish profile for this particular app i'll publish again and you can see i am able to get the secret value as i was getting it earlier just to demonstrate this i'll update the key vault value to hello and let's see if it is going to work fine so i've updated the value to the latest value which is hello rakesh now let me refresh the application as you can see i am getting the value now hello rakesh this proves that we are we have achieved the secretless code with the help of managed service identity and this is the modern practices we should be using it as a developer to read the secret from the key wall from any services now the managed services only is is not only up to accessing the key vault secret from your app services to the from your app services to the key vault it's or it, it, it can be also helpful in the other scenarios for example let's say your logic if wants to connect to the key uh, storage account database or your virtual machine wants to connect to the database or if you if you want to connect to the database uh from from let's say azure function in any scenario you should be able to use the access managed service identity one thing here is let's say if you are connecting if you want to connect your app service to some some of the virtual machine then what do you need to do is you need to grant the role based permission to your managed service identity to the target service i hope this was helpful to understand how do you use the key vault with the client id and secret so that you don't need to store your client secrets on the plain text and also beyond that it it is also clear that how do you use the managed identity system managed identity to access different services within the azure you need to remember that managed services can be utilized only within the services who are capable to use the active directory authentication and this is only restricted to the authentication the authorization part you have to manage your own thanks for watching the video i hope that was useful please give it a thumbs up if you like it